Hey folks, Jeremiah here, Trapping Today. Great to see you guys again. And in this video, we're going to look at the No BS Lures KO Canine Extreme Junior Trap. That's a lot to say. So this is a relatively new trap in the coyote market. Um, it's been, been out for a little while now, but uh, some of you may have heard of the Canine Extreme Trap. It's uh, become pretty popular trap uh, not legal to use in my state so uh, the canine extreme junior is a newer model that's a little bit downsized but it is an absolute beast of a trap it is it is heavy and rugged um, it's made by no bs lures and the ko stands for kendall obermeyer who is uh, the no bs lures guy he is out of iowa um, professional trapper uh, lure maker and obviously trap manufacturer. So I picked up a half a dozen of these to give them a shot. You can only get them from No BS Lures. Uh, you can get them from their website or you see them at a convention uh, or you can call them up and order. But they make these all in-house. They are made typically to order. So you decide what you want in terms of lamination, uh, four coil or two coil and a few other features that you can choose. You can choose to have them pre-dipped, which these are, and uh, then they, they make them after you order them. So these took uh, took a few weeks, two, three weeks to get them. They, it's convention season, so they've been uh, pretty busy, uh, but they arrived in this Fire 8 box, and got a whole pile of them, beautiful, heavy black traps. They are approximate, the ones I got were approximately 24, $23, $24 a piece after including shipping. So they're an expensive trap, uh, relatively, I mean, they're probably the, one of the more, most expensive coyote traps on the market. But for what you get, I think this is probably going to be the best value you're going to find. They're a few dollars, two, three dollars more than maybe a little bit more than that over uh, MB550. But this trap is an absolute beast. So, first things first, the reason I really like this trap primarily myself is because it's hard to find a trap that's legal to use in my state right out of the box. The 550 is legal, um, but uh, this is one of the only other ones that is that's big enough, rugged enough to catch coyotes, but is also still legal to use in my state. The biggest restriction we have is a 5 and 3 8 inside jaw spread. So uh, measuring uh, uh, perpendicular to the base plate of the trap uh, across the, the dog or, or the attachment uh, where the pan meets the jaw, um, that inside jaw measurement has to be less than 5 and 3 8 this measures five and a quarter inches inside jaw spread. Now you look at this, and look how tall of a trap this is. This doesn't, uh, doesn't look like a five and a quarter inside jaw spread. And the reason for that is, as you can see here, the base plate goes up about an inch um, before the jaws uh, bolt on. And these are bolt on jaws, which is another feature of this trap. It's actually. Uh, yeah, about an inch and a half uh, the, uh, from the top of the base plate, there's a 90 degree angle and that steel uh, angles straight up and then the jaws attach there with, uh, with some bolts and lock nuts, which is pretty awesome. Um, so what that does is it gives the trap sort of uh, uh, a, a different profile than you see in most traps where it's setting down here, but the animal the, the pan sets much lower than it does in most traps. It sets about a quarter inch below the jaws when set. We'll set this in a minute and, and I'll show you that. Uh, so it'll, this having this room allows the pan to set lower. What it also does is even with that small jaw spread, it still allows the animal to get its foot further down um, and, and allows the uh, levers to come up higher at a higher angle than they normally would uh, when the jaws close and that causes much better lockup. The, the animal has a much more difficult time to pull out the, the basically when they're in, they're in. Um, and and it uh, makes it a really strong trap even with the two coil. It doesn't really need very strong springs in order to accomplish the task and to hold an animal effectively. 
even the largest of animals. Um, and it also just it allows us to have that smaller jaw spread and still have uh, have this be a you know a big beefy trap that's going to catch high on the foot and, and is going to be very effective in, in most situations. So uh, so it's got that the jaw spread again five and three quarters. The other restrictions that we have in our state. Uh, is the trap has to be mounted to the center third of the base plate. These come with uh, with the D-ring already welded on uh, to the center of the base plate. Uh, our traps have to have three swivels. This has a swivel right at the base plate and it has a, uh, a short length of machine chain. It's uh, about nine inches approximately of machine chain and then you got another swivel uh, on the outer end. So basically all I get to do is make one cut right in the center of this chain, put another swivel because I need a mid chain swivel and then I've got my swivel here uh, at the, the stake end. So this is going to be really easy out of the box uh, legal trap to, to set um, and use in my state and a number of other states that have jaw spread restrictions or, or base plate mounting or all that stuff. The other good thing about it is it's a it's a really good just a just a good humane uh, trap in terms of having the proper swiveling and uh, um, it it kind of, kind of covers all the bases of what we're looking for in modern traps. So let's set this guy. This one I got I actually got uh, four coiled. The other thing I did was was uh, I got the offset jaws and I got outside lamination. So uh, what we're doing for those who aren't familiar is the the offset jaw is providing a space here uh, in between the jaws, so uh, a couple things are happening. The the jaws are able to close closer together when they close on an animal's foot. That means the levers are allowed able to get even higher and have even better lockup, and that space also allows for more blood flow and circulation in the animal's foot, so you don't have issues um, with with any chewing or anything like that. Uh, and and uh, very similarly, the outside lamination you can you could do it inside, but this is a dogless trap, so it makes it more complicated. But the the lamination provides more surface area, so you're not having that thin jaw hitting against the animal's paw. You're having with the lamination more than you're about double the surface area of the jaw that's uh, holding against the animal's paw, so it's just less pressure. Uh, makes it for a more comfortable experience for an animal to trap. If, if you think of uh, fox and coyotes as, as feeling comfort, um, they, they probably don't. But uh, for us, maybe it makes us feel a little better and it, it uh, is probably more humane however you look at it. So, let's uh, again, this, like I said, this is a dogless trap. So basically there is just a... Uh, square piece of steel that is welded to uh, one of the jaws and the uh, pan has a notch here that hooks into that piece of steel uh, that acts as your dog essentially uh, to set the trap and <clears throat> the pan notch also has uh, it has a night latch kind of built into it so there's kind of a step up and then uh, comes up and out what that does is you get an audible click when the trap is set and in place and that is, uh, to me it's a, a level of confidence where I know how far my pan's going to travel. Uh, I know when the trap's set properly and I know how far down the pan's going to travel before the animal fires the trap. We'll set this for a four coil, it's actually not that hard to set. Um, I say that and I'll probably... The only thing I don't like is it's a little bit tough to grab the, the pan from under the loose jaw or where you want to grab it from to get it set because of just the way it sits so low. Um, but check this out. The pan is actually setting quite a ways below the surface of the, the jaws. So that is unique to uh, most traps. And, and the reason for that, of course, is most traps have the dog going over the top of the jaw. Um, and, or the uh, latch or the, the notch on the pan is actually going right into the top of the jaw and they've gotten away from that by welding this uh, square steel on the inside of the jaw down lower. So that's, that's letting that pan set lower. Um, makes it nice because when you get a catch that you're going to be um, 
you're gonna have uh, uh, the animal is you know, have that paw completely in there and committed, and you're not gonna have to worry about uh, about having you know less chance of getting toe catches or things like that. So there's the trap. Essentially, in, in a nutshell, it, it's as you can see the thickness of all of the steel on this trap, all the way down to the pan, is pretty incredible. It's it's way way thicker than any other trap that that I have ever used. Uh, every bit of steel here is like overbuilt. It's something that's really not going to go anywhere. Coyote's not going to be able to to reef on this and bend the steel or anything. It's just it's rugged. I'm going to grab a, another coyote trap just to give you an example of something to compare to here. Alright, so I think we're going to get a, let's try a number three victor. I hadn't prepared for this because I didn't think I was going to show you any other traps, but... Okay, we got a number three Duke, uh, round jaws, essentially the same as the number three Victor. Um, I've got some number two Bridger Northwoods there too, we could show, but... Um, just be a pretty simple example. You can see... This actually has some fairly thick jaws on this duke, but um, if you look at everything else, the steel is just, you're just dealing with a completely different caliber of uh, steel. Look at the two base blades, I don't know if you can see that. Um, the, the base blade on the no BS trap is uh, like double of the thickness of the base plate uh, on the duke. And uh, the cross member is the same way. The, the, the levers, the steel on the levers. This, these levers actually have these clean outs. They're just uh, a little extra uh, gap that's kind of carved into these levers. And what that does is it's not, I think it's probably not as good at this as like if you just had like a wire levers, which the Jake traps have and, and some others. But so you can see uh, it, what this does is it just allows, it keeps dirt and rocks and sod from kind of uh, catching in between the lever and uh, one of the jaws. Um, just has more space for that. When the levers fire up, uh, that stuff can kind of travel through and not get caught as easily. Uh, one thing, uh, the, the, the coating on this, these traps, I should mention, they come with, uh, you can decide whether you want them bare metal or you can have them coated like this. This is a proprietary coating that uh, Kendall puts on these traps. Uh, I don't really know what it's made of. It's like, it, it's kind of shiny like a powder, some sort of powder coating. It's really rugged. I've heard people say that they were able to use traps with this coating for a couple of years without having to uh, put any new coating on or, or do any dyeing um, of the traps or painting. So this is pretty rugged stuff. It looks really slick, and uh, it's it's nice to have traps. You can just take out right out of the box. You can set them. Uh, you can wax these. Uh, I'm going to wax mine. You can also boil them, and you may want to boil them just to get some scent off if you're concerned about scent control. Um, but basically, the trap is ready to set out of the box. Now, there's one drawback that I found so far with these traps, just playing around with them, and that is pan tension. So the, the, the setup here with the, the dogless and, and the pan, the pan actually has, there are a couple of bolts and nuts here. Uh, this nut, if, there, if you want to adjust the pan level, uh, this nut, it, you loosen this, it's on underneath of the cross member, and you can slide that um, over either direction to bring the pan up or down. Uh, these ones seem to be right on the money, uh, coming right out of the box. Uh, but if you need to, you can adjust that. And then you have a bolt on the end here where the pan attaches to the frame where you can uh, adjust the pan tension. Now, this is a completely loose pan with no tension on the pan, but you're going to have tension with uh, the springs holding up against uh, the, the notch here and uh, the jaw 
and I think it's got to be something to do with his four coiled, a lot of spring strength, and the maybe the friction associated with that coating. So I've, I've got Sullivan's trap tester. I've been testing these. I can't get under uh, like four or five pounds of pan tension on these uh, with no, no tension on this bolt. So what I'm basically going to do is wax them first and I'm going to see what I can get for pan tension waxed. If I'm still too high on pan tension, um, it's going to be just a little bit of filing here and there. And uh, we'll file maybe file either on, on the jaw side or on the pan side at a little bit of an angle uh, and, and round that off, make the angle a little bit so, so that the pan is going to travel a little easier. Just a little bit of filing at a time, keep testing, testing, testing until we get it just right. Now, if you're just trapping for coyotes, you, you may want like four pounds, three, four pounds of pan tension. Some people maybe even a little more, but that's kind of high. If you want to catch foxes, uh, if you want to catch uh, other smaller critters, uh, coons, whatever, you're going to want a lower pan tension than that. So I'm looking to get like two to three pounds of pan tension here. Three is probably a pretty good number to shoot for. I'll experiment a little bit here and there. Uh, but but that's going to probably take a little work. So basically that is the only complaint I have about these traps. I, I'm not even complaining about the price because for what you get, um, I just feel like, man, that's, that's a heck of a bargain for how well built this trap is. So with that, I mean, check these out. They're the No BS Lures KO K9 Extreme Junior. There's nothing junior about them. These traps are a beast. Um, I think they're going to do really well. I just hope I don't get any stolen on the trap line because they are an expensive trap. But I think they're a great investment for right out of the box. Maybe a little bit of filing here and there. Um, but heck of a good trap. So far, so good. I will know much better when we get these out on the line this fall and start using them and see how they operate. So until then, stay tuned for future videos. Thanks.